If you're looking to buy a stacked NBA 2K account with max badges and more, visit SportsTMB.com. He has been in the community for years and has hundreds of reviews. Click the first link in the description to get your account today. All right, last time I opened a video with this, it worked really well, so I figured I'd do it again. Uh, these are 2K Saturday videos, so most of my content, or at least, you know, 60% of it is actually scripted, unlike this. But if you want some more NBA content, there is plenty that I've already uploaded, and there'll be plenty in the future. So if you want that kind of stuff, please subscribe to this channel. Now, with that said, today we are talking about Ja Morant, who has been by far and away this year's Rookie of the Year. And that should not be, even in the slightest, a hot take. I saw some ridiculous claim that he shouldn't win Rookie of the Year, suggesting that it should be Tyler Hero. That's just wrong. Ja Morant is this year's Rookie of the Year. Unless Zion comes in and plays the last 50 games and averages like 40 points, Ja Morant's going to win Rookie of the Year. And the reason he's going to do that is because he has been great as a rookie. He's averaging 18 points, 6.8 assists, shooting 49% from the field, 39% from three, though on just 2.3 attempts. I do think it should be mentioned that he is not actually that great of a shooter. We'll get into that in a minute. And all of this has been in less than 30 minutes a game. Per 36, he averages 22 and 8. And even more importantly than Jaws' stats, the Grizzlies, as I'm not sure many people know, are currently the 8th seed in the Western Conference. The Grizzlies are better than expected by most people, though I did say in my video a few days after I believe it was and figured out that the Grizzlies would be drafting John Morant, uh, that I did think that this Grizzlies team could be a playoff level roster if everything fell properly into place. And if John Morant was a fantastic rookie, and it seems like that's been the case. They are 17 and 22, and they are currently on a four game win streak. Already has a really good relationship with Jaron Jackson Jr., which is very important for the future of this Grizzlies team. And he has been making some clutch plays, multiple clutch plays, in fact. He's taken over a few games. I don't remember the opponent, but a few games ago, he scored like eight points in the clutch. Uh, he had that obviously well-known clutch block on Kyrie Irving, which is a sign that he's been really good defensively. Uh, as I said, with his relationship with Jaron Jackson Jr., he's a good pick and roll and pick and pop threat. And him and Ja have had a very clear chemistry. Jackson himself has been having a great second year, averaging 18 points and shooting 42% from three on six attempts. Remember, this guy is a big man and also potentially the greatest defensive player of all time. Uh, we'll get on to the Grizzlies as a whole later. Uh, I do want to mention some of the flaws with Ja that I think are going under the radar. As I said earlier, while he has shot well from a three, he's attempting very minimal shots from downtown at just two a game. He has a lot of room to grow there. I do appreciate him playing his game and not forcing it, unlike a certain point guard that he has been compared to, wink wink. Half of his attempts from three are assisted, which can be viewed two different ways. One, there is it's good that he has an off-ball game, but at the same time, that means that half of his threes are catch and shoot, which for a point guard, you really want to have that ability to pull up from three and pull up well, and he hasn't exactly had that shot yet. His floater range shots have been good, which is important for a point guard to have, when he goes for a floater, it typically goes in at around 44%, which is a decent percentage. Uh, his mid-range game has not been good, but it has also not been horrible, shooting 40% from mid with 13% of his shots coming from there. It was feared with him coming out of college that his in-between game would not quite be there and it would limit him offensively. And while, yeah, it's not exactly good, it's also not horrendous by any stretch. If he pulls up from mid-range, there's at least a decent chance that the shot's going to go in. But most importantly with Ja, he has been relentless attacking the basket. He also has incredible vision, but he isn't pounding the air out of the ball. 
See, it's actually not really good, and this has been discussed before, uh, the NBA Storyteller made a whole fucking movie about this. It's not really good for point guards to be averaging 10 assists, not really good for anyone to be averaging 10 assists, generally speaking. I think it's fine with the Lakers right now, but that limitation could be a problem down the line. But uh, it's not really good for the point guards to be doing that, but the fact that he's only averaging 7 assists is actually good for this Grizzlies team, and it speaks to his his maturity as a player he's not pounding the air out of the ball he's not forcing passes he's just really letting the game come to him playing to his strength and playing with those strengths very well shooting nearly 50 percent as a guard in his rookie year that is not an easy feat to accomplish that pretty much never happens as i said he has also been a good defender jaw is a little skinny which can be a problem at times but he is Fairly tall enough for a point guard and I believe he has long arms don't quote me on that because he might not but he's been really good at fighting around screens he's been pretty damn solid at uh, not you know getting uh, blown by by his uh, guy he's defending he's just really solid defensively basically if I could I don't know use a word to describe Ja overall it would be solid not that he hasn't been fantastic but like there's not really anything about this guy that isn't at least solid uh, but you know we have a point guard here who is has great vision is really good at attacking the basket he can hit his floaters he's at least a respectable shooter from three a lot of room to grow from there as i said but he's definitely not someone you can leave wide open uh he can hit a pull-up mid-range shot maybe not the best but it's definitely not the worst and he's a good defensive player uh, i've seen a lot of people compare him to derrick rose and i do think that is fair um, I think that once Curry starts declining, whenever that may be, probably sometime at the end of the new decade, I think that Ja could end up being the best point guard in the NBA. Now, I would probably give that one to Trey Young, that title, but it isn't clear cut. Without a doubt in my mind, Ja Morant is going to be a superstar player and one of the eight or so best players. There's just a good chance that Trey Young is going to be one of the seven or so best players in the NBA or whatever it may be. Uh, because Trey is shooting combined with having arguably even better vision than Ja Morant makes him an offensive threat that is just absurd though it is worth mentioning that Ja is a significantly better defender Trey might end up being the worst defender in the league once Isaiah Thomas retires because no one's going to be the worst defender in the NBA until Isaiah Thomas finally hangs it up um but his relationship with jaron jackson jr uh should lead to the grizzlies being a great team and i think he can be one of the best players in the league and what is even scarier about that for the rest of the nba is that jaron jackson jr looks like a guy that can be even better I do want to quickly reflect on the Grizzlies here. This is a young team with two young stars who is currently the eighth seed in the Western Conference. Now it is true that the West has not been quite as good as it was in the past, but it is still the Western Conference and the Grizzlies are playing fantastically with a rookie point guard and a second year power forward slash center and without, you know, particularly good surrounding pieces there's Jonas Valanciunas who's a good player but not great Jay Crowder shooting 31 percent from three Dylan Brooks is hitting his three but also makes a lot of questionable decisions with the ball in his hands the su supporting cast for these two is not particularly great but they're still winning games in the west and they are currently in the playoffs 30 games into the season and that should be something that we are talking about more. Jaren has a potential to be a special, special player. Ja has potential to be a special player. And I definitely envy Memphis Grizzlies fans at the moment. Definitely would rather be one than a Bulls fan right now. Because, you know, the Grizzlies are actually in the 8th seed in the playoffs in a tougher conference. But... I digress. I never actually knew what that term meant, but I'm just rambling at this point. I just said meant. Anyways, uh, 
screw you Grizzlies fans, especially Rudy St. Clair, you lucky fucks. Uh, that's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this. And my dog is barking in the background, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> just like and subscribe, you know what to do. Goodbye.